What's up everyone, it's The Munch, and welcome to another Pokemon Sun and Moon news discussion video. Ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves because the starter evolutions have finally been revealed with an awesome gameplay trailer, and they all look so cool and really unique, but not just that, but Ash Greninja has also been confirmed to be in Pokemon Sun and Moon with the demo coming this month. And not just that, but Mega Evolutions are finally confirmed to return, and there's also some cool new features, so quite a lot of stuff to take a look at in today's video. Let's get to it. So of course we're starting off the trailer with what you've all been waiting for, and that is the starter evolution. So first up is Rowlet, the first Pokemon in the Alola decks, who will now be evolving into Dartrix, remaining a grass and flying type, and of course with the ability overgrow just like every other grass starter. But this guy looks awesome. I really like his design, especially the little bang of hair that he's got going on. He even like flicks it away and we'll read a little bit about him in a, just a second. But moving right along to Litten's second stage evolution, which is going to be Tora Cat. Of course, Litten is my favorite starter in Alola and I really like his second stage evolution here. Just like with Rowlet, there's no change in typing or ability when Litten evolves. So Tora Cat here will remain a fire type with that blaze ability, just like every fire starter but moving on to the final starter of Alola which is of course Poplio and we are gonna find out that his evolution is going to be Brion or Brione I'm actually not sure how to pronounce this one and it is definitely the weirdest one out of the bunch but of course remains a water type with that torrent ability as well so you might be thinking to yourself these evolutions look a little bit familiar and that's because a while ago I did a video on these Chinese leaks of apparently the final starter evolutions and it looks like these are 100% confirmed now guys with the middle stage evolutions basically leading right into these Chinese leaked evolutions. So we're starting off with Rowlet's evolution Dartrix, which the first thing you'll notice is its name Dartrix. So the dart part actually comes from the fact that it shoots darts from its feathers and the Pokemon site actually says it conceals sharp bladed feathers inside its wings showing astounding precision as it sends them flying in attack. This all sounds super cool but it kind of just looks like he's using razor leaf in the animation so I'm not sure if he's going to have like a unique attack like feather darts or something like that but we can obviously make the connection here from darts to arrows as we saw in the final evolution of Rowlet. It literally uses its wing as a bow and then its feathers as arrows and it just feels like so obvious now that these are the true final evolutions. So if you guys want to check out a video I did on those, I will definitely link it in the description or you can check it out because those are definitely going to be the final evolutions. But this video is all about the middle stage evolutions. So let's get back to talking about our buddy Dartrix. So I've talked a lot about each Alolan Pokemon having a sort of unique quirk. And Dartrix here is definitely no exception with his little bang of luscious hair. He's always trying to fix it up and I mean I kind of do that a lot too. So I definitely relate to Dartrix there but it says on the Pokemon site that sometimes it'll feel so bothered by its dirty or ruffled feathers that it can't focus on battle and it's up to its trainers to help it overcome this troubling stage. If this Pokemon is with a trainer who helps it through, its strength will grow hugely. So does that mean if you don't take good care of Dartrix, it might not be as strong or maybe have a different evolution? I'm not sure, but it's really weird because that is a popular theory right now that the starters of Alola actually have split evolutions. And that means that the Chinese leaked ones would only be half of the puzzle. And there's a whole nother set of evolutions that they could turn into, which I'm not sure if I really believe the theory, but with little hints like what the Pokemon site says, I kind of think it might be true, but maybe not necessarily split evolutions. I could also see gender exclusive evolutions for the starters, considering Poplio's evolution definitely has a more feminine look, and Rowlet's evolution I feel like is a little bit more masculine, whereas Litten is right in the middle, so I'm not sure they're just both weird theories right now, but I could see them happening. So that's gonna be it for Dartrix, Rowlet's evolution. I love how much personality they're putting into each of these Pokemon though. You can even see it in a me like opening up its eyes. So it definitely has eyes somewhere in there, but he's really cool and I like his design and I can't wait to see if that Archer Owl is gonna be his final evolution because that thing is badass. But possibly cooler than that, or I guess hotter because it's a fire type, it's Litten's evolution, Tora Cat. And this guy is really, really awesome because of his unique quirk 
that little bell that's hanging from its neck. This little bell is actually a flame sack, an organ that can produce flames, and you can definitely see that is the source of Tora Cat's power. All of his fire attacks come from that little bell, and even when you're playing with it in the new Pokemon of me, it looks like you can burn if you try to touch it, which is a really cool little touch, and I guess kind of a parallel uh, to Dartrix's hair. I don't know, I feel like they each have that like little unique thing about him. So just like with Dartrix, the info we get on Tora Cat seems to definitely lead it to turning into that big flame wrestling cat for its final evolution as we see the cat punch that this Pokemon can dish out with its strong four legs is extremely powerful and it can bend iron bars and knock out large men with a single blow that definitely sounds like a wrestling cat and although Torica is on all four legs now it looks like for his final evolution he will still be standing on two legs which I know a lot of people seem to argue about that we have a lot of fire starters that end up on two legs not sure why, but looks like it's happening again with Tora Cat's final evolution. Now, just like with Dartrix, it seems Tora Cat has a strange split personality. Again, not sure if it really means anything, but it's worth reading. So, Tora Cat has a great love for battle and will attack so relentlessly that its opponents lose the will to fight. And yet, it sometimes behaves like a spoiled child in front of trainers or Pokemon with whom it trusts. So, seems like there's two different ways you could raise each starter Pokemon, and I'm not sure if, like, they'll evolve into a different Pokemon, of course, but I feel like it's worth pointing out these little hints, as I'ma call them, because if it does come true, then this is the info we're gonna look back to. Now, moving on, we've got the final starter evolution, which is, of course, for Poplio, the water starter, and it is gonna be Brion. Still not sure how to say that name, but I'm gonna go with Brion, the pop star Pokemon. So just like the other evolutions, it doesn't change in typing, so it's going to be a pure water type. And just like the other evolutions, it does have its own unique quirk, which I'm going to say for Brion is its dancing. Brion learns its dances by imitating the other members of its colony. It sometimes even learns dances from humans, and it uses these dances to create balloon after balloon, which it uses in battle. This sounds kind of complicated, so I'm not sure if it's going to be like a unique signature move for Brion here, but... It sounds kind of likely at this point with Rowlet being so specific to those leaf darts and Litten having that weird flame sack. It looks like Brion is all about dancing and making bubbles of water with its dancing moves. So I'm expecting each of these uh, starter Pokemon evolutions to have their own signature moves. But just like the other starters, Brion also has a weird split personality. It says on the site that even when it's feeling sad, this Pokemon doesn't allow its sorrow to show. And it's said that Brion will only reveal a sad expression to a Pokemon trainer whom it has opened its heart to. So I'm not sure if this will have any impact on the gameplay, but it seems they're really trying to push the fact that the way you bond with your Pokemon will somehow affect the way it grows. So whether that affects what it evolves into, I'm not sure, but definitely try to take care of your Pokemon and be nice to them, guys, because I feel like it's going to unlock some kind of secret in Alola. And I'm not sure if it's a new evolution or maybe something similar to a Mega Evolution like the other thing in this trailer because Ash Greninja is coming to Sun and Moon. Now the only way we can get Ash Greninja is through the Pokemon Sun and Moon demo, which is actually coming out this month guys. In just 15 days, we will already be able to play Sun and Moon and Ash Greninja is in it. What the heck? So those of you that don't know, Ash Greninja is basically a fusion of Ash and his Greninja from the Pokemon X and Y anime. It was never known how the two were able to fuse into this strange form, but obviously the Greninja has a bit of an Ash-like appearance, and it is just insane that this thing is actually in the game, because does that mean Ash is somehow in the game world now, or is this just a promotion? I really don't know, but... Ash Greninja is amazing and the fact that it's in the game actually confirms how this transformation is taking place and how it might possibly be linked to the starters of Alola as well. So basically Ash Greninja is a special kind of Greninja with a unique ability called Battle Bond and with this ability if that Greninja knocks out an opponent it'll boost everything and just transform it into Ash Greninja and just look at this transformation it looks so awesome just like it does in the anime. So it's basically like a mega evolution that kicks in through this unique ability and when it transforms into Ash Greninja, it definitely will get a boost in stats and even some better attacks. I'm not sure if it's like a new unique attack that it gets, but those water shurikens are huge, man, and they definitely deal more damage. So you can definitely see now how to use it in the game, and it is going to be awesome. So let me know what you think of Ash Greninja actually being in Pokemon Sun and Moon. I think it's just crazy that they put something from the anime actually in the games because 
Does that confirm Ash is now in the game world? I'm not really sure, but there's definitely something fishy going on with this Battle Bond ability, and I have a feeling that maybe the starter Pokemon from Alola might also share this Battle Bond ability, or maybe have some way to unlock it. It seems very similar to Mega Evolution, and that's actually the next thing we're going to talk about, because Mega Evolutions are returning in Sun and Moon. It is finally confirmed, guys though not necessarily new Mega Evolutions. They actually just confirmed that the old ones from X and Y and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire are of course still going to be in the games. I always thought that they would be because why would they make all of these new Pokemon and then just not have them in the next game? It seemed kind of weird, but still no confirmation on new Mega Evolutions, which I think is what a lot of people were hoping for, uh, but you can definitely still Mega Evolve and you can actually do it through the power of the Z-Ring, which is the new kind of bracelet thing. So. It has the power to both do Z moves and Mega Evolution. The Pokemon site also clarifies that the Mega Stones for Pokemon that appear in the Alola region may be received from people in the game or from special shops, so it's not going to be quite the Mega Stone hunt we had in X and Y or Oras, but maybe, just maybe, there will still be some new Alola form Mega Evolutions, and of course there would be a Mega Stone hunt for those, but at least the old Pokemon that evolve, it seems like there's Mega Stones will just be in shops, which pretty easy to get. So let me know what you guys think. Will there be new Mega Evolutions in Pokemon Sun and Moon? Maybe even for the starters of Sun and Moon because we definitely know that these starters and Rockruff hold some kind of secret, yet we still don't know exactly what that secret is. So my opinion is that this Battle Bond ability that Ash Greninja has is not exclusive to Ash Greninja, but also the starter Pokemon of Alola and maybe Rockruff, if you build a strong enough bond with those Pokemon, they will be able to achieve something similar to Mega Evolution, but not quite. But regardless of what they choose for the name, I think that's what it's going to be. Some kind of new way of Mega Evolving, quote unquote, like a stage beyond the final evolution, because the starters in Rockruff definitely hold a secret and we still don't know what it is. Now that's going to do it for the starter evolutions and Ash Greninja and Mega Evolutions. I can't believe we got all of that in just one trailer. That is insane, but guys, it is not over yet because we have a couple of cool new features revealed that I think are also worth taking a look at. So, have fun with others in Festival Plaza. And can we just take a second to appreciate how different each of these characters look because character customization in this game is actually gonna be awesome and I can't wait. But we can see the trainer riding around on Tauros, smashing rocks and getting on a drip loom balloon and all sorts of crazy stuff. Apparently this is going to be the hub for online play where you can meet up with other people. I'm not sure if necessarily on your friends list, but I'm assuming it's gonna be like all sorts of people from your friends, passerbys, just random online from around the world. And you can actually talk to them, trade, battle. It seems really cool to be honest and definitely a step up in the online game for Pokemon because having a hub where you can see all your friends kind of like the secret bases is really cool. And now we can do that actually online. So I'm pretty excited for this Festival Plaza, to be honest. It seems you can gather your friends and form teams, kind of like the secret bases actually, and take on missions which involve catching certain Pokemon or battling with certain types, which is just gonna add a little bit more stuff to do in Sun and Moon. I feel like the Pokemon games have some good post game, but not necessarily too much to keep you going aside from like online battling. And now with these little missions and stuff, Definitely a lot of content to keep you entertained after you beat the story of the game. So overall, I'm actually pretty excited for this Plaza Festival thing. And finally, we have another new feature called the Pokepelago. Pokemon that have been placed in boxes can enjoy the Pokepelago, which consists of a variety of islands where Pokemon can glow exploring, play on athletic equipment, and enjoy other fun activities. So it looks like this is another feature for the bottom screen, and I really appreciate that because, let's be real, the bottom screen as Pokemon is mostly useless, and now there's actually stuff going on. Of course, X and Y had the Pokemon Ami and uh, super training that you could do on there, but this is like a step up. There's a whole little island of random Pokemon from your box and even wild Pokemon can apparently show up. You can sometimes send them on missions and retrieve items for you. So it seems like it's just a minor mini game, but it could have major impact, I guess, on your gameplay. So I'm definitely going to be trying these features out. I feel like there's something that is better when you actually play it than just talking about it from the trailers, so definitely going to be trying this out when Sun and Moon comes out, or maybe even in the demo, because that's apparently coming out this month, so I cannot freaking wait. Of course, guys, when the demo drops and when the official release of the games come out, I will be doing a full Let's Play on it, just like every other Pokemon game, so definitely stay tuned and get hyped, because 
Oh my gosh, Sun and Moon is almost here, and I can't believe it, guys. And a million subs is almost here, and I can't believe that either. So, holy crap, stay tuned, guys, because I'm planning out the million sub special very, very soon. So that is going to be it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Definitely let me know what you think of the starter evolutions. Which is your favorite second stage evolution? Because Linton was my favorite in the first stage lineup, and I think I still like Linton, or I guess Tora Cat, the evolution. Uh, the little flame sack is really cool, and even though Dartrix's hair is also kind of cool, I, I think I'm still gonna stick with the fire starters. So let me know what your favorite one is and what you think of all of this awesome stuff revealed today. Thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you all in the next one.